All right, I believe we are live today. I didn't intend on making a video today, but uh, after getting this update through the Department of Justice, I decided it would be a good idea to cover the topic. Uh, before we get started, we get a few introductions. My name is Jay. I'm the owner of Section 8 Consulting.com, and today we're going to discuss probably one of the biggest busts in American history in terms of housing authorities, contractors, and workers. Um, let's just say the shit has definitely hit the fan. I want to commend the Department of Justice and uh, Marissa Fudge with HUD. Uh, I believe that uh, during the last four years, Marissa Fudge has done an unbelievable job. We're talking about a woman that heads the uh, Department of uh, HUD, and um, she has been on a rampage indicting and uh, arresting and suing and shutting down housing authorities that have committed fraud that have stolen money and have uh, been involved in many egregious activities. But by far, this will be probably be the largest uh, session of fraud that has probably been seen in terms of a housing authority and its employees and contractors committing fraud and probably one of the longest running scams out there. And it involves the city of New York. Uh, I'm rather surprised, but I knew that if Marissa was going to leave, uh, probably during this election term as the head of HUD, uh, that likely she would target uh, the biggest the biggest monster on the hill, and that would probably be uh, New York. Let this be a lesson, as I discussed it, to the city of Los Angeles. Uh, if New York is on her hit list and, and Department of Justice, I can assure you that Leisha and those of you sitting out there at the Housing Authority for Los Angeles, you're likely going to be the next domino to fall. I can tell you, I've just seen this. We've made many videos of housing authorities and all its employees being arrested and indicted, dragged out the building, and uh, people, uh, there's insolvency, no money left. They've stolen everything. So the directive today that I want to go over is a news uh, issue by the Department of Justice directly, and that is 70 current and former uh, New York employees charged with bribery and extortion in an expansive term of almost a decade. They exploited a very small feature in which allowed those employees involved in the administrative part of this to not only jack up prices for con contractor work throughout properties, subsidies, and so on, but this $10,000 loophole with no signature or no competition bids allowed them to probably defraud multi-millions and so now we can explain as to why there's such a struggle to get a housing voucher in the city of New York because when we look at a massive fraud that plays out this long, and then we look at multi-generations of families and friends and constituents working there, and we're all in on this, where we're just stealing uh, everything that we can. We're stealing the light bulbs out the building. Uh, we're lining our pockets with as much cash as we can. We mean literal cash as well. And this this is what's going on uh, with the city of New York. So I'm going to read the statement from the Department of Justice, the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York. Uh, in the largest uh, number of federal bribery charges in a single day in DJ DOJ history, 70 current and, poor and former employees of the New York uh, uh, Housing Authority and other agencies have been charged with alleg allegedly accepting cash payments, from contracts in exchange for awarding uh, contracts. Uh, Damon Williams of the United States uh, Attorney's Office um, Merrick B. Garland, uh, the Attorney General of the United States, and you can see some of the biggest players in the game are in this DOJ report, would say to you that these 70s people, let me tell you, uh, there's going to be a severe lesson learned because anytime you involve the U.S., uh, the Department of Justice, and every other federal agency like this, I can tell you the consequences of what they stole, uh, they're going to be very serious for them. In, in the world that I work in, as a Section 8 consultant, I can tell you that there's Section 8, right? We're all familiar with that. But there's another one that I casually joke about, and that's Section 9. That's when you get three hots and a cot in a federal prison. Uh, it's a lot like receiving subsidies because you're given housing and food and medical care. However, the lease or the term of your prison sentence is without a key. Uh, you won't be unlocking or leaving without serving 75% of that lease. And a lot of these people will never... Uh, likely they will either have to pay their way out if they have just any money left. Not only that, but they got to make restitution regarding this. So I want to skip on to a certain part of this so we can see the gravity or the scope of the, the fraud committed here. 
and it's 11 pages, so I'm not clearly not going to go over 11 pages. I think we're pretty clear on what's happened here. Uh, so the OIG and also the, I think we're at 16 federal agencies looking into these, uh, this indictment. So uh, HUD, the OIG Inspector General, Ray Oliver, said that uh, the pay-to-play bribery scheme alleged in the complaints and sealed today wasted millions of dollars and risked residents staying unacceptable living conditions. The alleged con uh, conduct, uh, the alleged conduct uh, identified during this investigation harms the effectiveness of housing programs that support more than 200 thousand residents so essentially these seven actors and probably those they are complicit with they're literally the very cause of why many people can't even get housing or a voucher or why you're living in uh, other subsidies properties or even project-based housing and you've got a contractor that just got his kindergarten certificate at the bubblegum machine can barely screw in a light bulb being paid nine hundred dollars to change that light bulb. Do you see where the scam goes on? And so to be complicit in that, that means that the people at the housing authority directly, the people responsible for issuing these vouchers and making executive decisions for that fucking company. And I'm going to go ahead and give a viewer warning. There may be a few profanities because it makes me miserably mad. That means that all these people that are seniors and disabled and veterans that served our country are trying to work with an agency that's simply running around, lining its pocket by fucking Louis Vuitton, new computers and everything else, lining their pockets with cash, but we don't have a fucking minute to serve anybody, to fix anything, because we're stealing everything. So much so that we have 16, 16 federal agencies indicting all these people. You got to get a bus just to haul them out of that fucking place. And you're expected to trust the people over there to New York Housing Authority or anybody else connected to it at an administrative level. So you see what the problem here is. We've arrested the entire top floor of the fucking building. So at what point should anybody believe anything out of the mouth of the New York Housing Authority or agencies connected to it when you have basically the whole building committing fraud? Against 200,000 not 100,000, 200,000 New York residents that need this. I hope for the sake of those people that have children that are in wheelchairs and disabled that needed housing and vouchers, I hope for their sake that these people, all, all 70 of them, can't buy their way out of the convictions and they land their ass in what I call Section 9 and spend time and are made to repay every fucking nickel of this and barred from ever holding an office or ever working at another housing authority ever again. There's no way that 70 people didn't know what they were doing. You're not stealing from something that it, it simply is a, a fund that can no longer, uh, that can reissue money. You stole from the government. And then you stole from the very people that needed it. And so, and then we get into contractors that are complicit with this. So all these people, we're talking about 70 plus the contractors. Now, we didn't target other things like the military budget fund. We targeted weak, vulnerable senior citizens. We targeted over 200,000, and we have no explanation for ourselves. This is a sad day for the city of New York. And you want people to trust anybody at the housing authority or connected to them? I want this to be a real big, big note on put LA on notice. You guys out there in LA, Alicia, don't be shocked when the door comes off. I hope, I hope for the sake of HUD and Marissa Fudge that runs that place, they do come down there. Because so far it's been DC. Let's see, DC went on a bus, a few housing authorities across the state of Texas. California's next on that list. If there's enough time before the election, you're probably next. And to think that you talk to people like they're trash, you don't have money for vouchers, you don't help anybody, and then you go out there and you rob and steal like you're a $2 trick on 3rd Street. You're stealing from the most vulnerable people in America. I think this is quite perfect. And I'll be looking for their mug shots. I hope nobody can buy their ass out. I hope every single one of them are, are made to sell their homes, to absolutely dissolve everything they fucking own, 
until every copper penny is paid back. You got to be a real low down hooker. I mean, you got to be the lowest form of a hooker and a crackhead to go and steal from the one program that deals with the most vulnerable. I mean, you got to be the level of depravity that you have to reach mentally, spiritually to do this. It brings you the lowest echelons of hell. You don't deserve anything from anybody. And to do it to 200,000 people. Just so your ass can go out to the mall and get you some Gucci or whatever you're doing with it. It makes me, it, 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 I got to tell you, man, it makes me think about that housing authority and all the actors in there. So I can see now the lawsuits need to roll. And everybody that's been served some injustice in the city of New York that depended on that housing authority or its employees should absolutely be sued. Nothing can be believed anymore. All right, so I see some of the live comments, and I'm not going to apologize for any profanities, period. Viewer discretion is advised when I make videos, period. If you don't like it, roll on. But I'm going to tell you something. There are certain things that anger me, and this one right here. But, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad it's over with. They ran the fraud for a decade. Probably multi-generation. We got grandma, grandpa, the lawn boy, the, the maid cleaning the toilet. Everybody's on it, in on it. All right. So Denise Berry, good afternoon. How are you? I've been on the Section 8 waiting list for four years now. I'm in Virginia Beach. They say I will be pulling names next month, March. Should I believe them? I think you should, Denise. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of clients out of Virginia, and I think that's perfectly believable. Lizzie, thank you for the crown. Keep it real. I love that. Interesting name of the day is a, a YouTube uh, viewer. Uh, keep it real. I like it. In Massachusetts, and to having housing authorities investigated to the fullest. You're right. Lizzie, thank you for the rose. Tracy Lynn, wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah. We won't, let me tell you something. The crowd of crooks, won't. we won't be complete until we have Los Angeles. Now we've seen the biggest. You know, a lot of my clients believe and respect the people that work in housing authorities only to find out that most of them, A, are unable to even do their job properly from uh, lack of training or formal education. They don't understand why they're treated bad. And then they think that these people are federal employees. They're not. Housing authorities are, are not federal employees. That's part of the reason why so much lying goes on, so much prejudicial behavior goes on. But when these housing authorities and their administration and all their contractors and other employees fall, it goes to show the big weaknesses that are really out there. Am I suggesting everybody in the New York Housing Authority or connected agencies are committing fraud? Absolutely not. But I got to tell you, for 70 people to, to, to be involved under the same roof, you'd have to say that almost everybody in the building is complicit. You couldn't, you couldn't honestly poke your eyes out and, and pop your eardrums and suggest to me you didn't know what the fuck was going on in that building. And you know how it bribes you know how it gets it goes that far? Because eventually it probably started with a few. And then as more and more people found out, everybody wanted a slice of the pie. All while we defrauded every senior, every veteran, every disabled person and person that needed it. While everybody struggled on these retarded lotteries and waiting lists, uh, hoping for a voucher to be funded, but unfortunately we're paying the maintenance man $1,000 to screw in a light bulb. This is the kind of bullshit I've been telling you guys all these years, and here's rock hard for evidence. The biggest housing authority and its administrative employees outside of it all holding a big old bus right down the federal court. Get what you get. Lizzie, you asked so true. No souls in that body. Keep it real. You're awesome. I appreciate it. Guys, if you have any questions about Section 8 housing, I'm here for that too. Happy to answer that. You know, we work with around 1,000 clients a year. I do what I can to help people navigate the system, work with landlords. We work with legal aid societies, nonprofits, <clears throat> counselors, case, works, case workers. We have a lot of people navigate the system. It doesn't mean I can perform any miracles. It just means that I have a lot of experience and uh, can help uh, many in many ways uh, through professional consulting. And uh, that's what I do. So now you're not imagining this. That is a Christmas tree. 
we don't have a lot of time. We do more. We put it to you this way. My schedule is pretty, pretty uh, busy. And so likely you're looking at a Christmas tree that will never be taken down. I've tried relentlessly, but there's never enough time. And to be honest with you guys, I just got a call from my step parents. Uh, appears the kitchen burned down. And so now I'm wrapped up in that. I didn't even know if I was going to make a video today, to be honest. I've been struggling. It was a week ago I wanted to, to make a video. We were, we were going on such a nice run of videos. And I've been making videos on YouTube probably longer than most. Uh, and I'm probably the most well-known in terms of Section 8 and housing. But um, it, it gets hard sometimes because life happens. We all have families. And you know, when it rains, it pours and it's been pouring a lot, you know, trying to manage uh, my parents, step parents and between fires and illness and everything else. I'm at that age, I think, when too many things happen in your family. And so you're trying to conduct business, but at the same time, you're being dragged to do all these different things. And so I find that we were erratic in the, in the way we make videos. But this week, we're going to push out a lot. Uh, that, that way, if I have another week where I can't make a video, we'll have lots of extra content, you know. All right, so I'm going to go on these comments. Desi, can I ask a question? I just got Section 8 in New York last year for my uh, DV situation. Okay. DV, for those that don't know, are an acronym for domestic violence. But I'm going to try and report to Dallas, Texas. Will they still accept me if I have a fourth, <coughs> fourth degree aggravated assault? Well, uh, you know, aggravated crimes, uh, it, it depends. You know, every housing authority, and at present there are 3,300 have their own policies, procedures, and standards in which they follow. Those can be vastly different. Now, if you've already got a if you've already got a voucher, I, I would suggest to you the the easiest way to, because you know, unless you're a sex offender or been convicted of a crime where you were involved in the manufacture of the use of or the sale of methamphetamines, the only other crime that's considered most egregious in terms of vouchers and housing would be aggravated crime. So. <laughs> to be honest with you, Desi, I'd have to speak to you privately about that. I need to ask you a lot more questions to see whether or not that'd work, okay? It's not really something we want to put in public format. And that's that's for your to respect you, okay? Uh, and I don't know if you're indicating that you are the one committing or another person committed against you. I was, I'm guessing against you. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, keep it real. Amen to that. It's been a tough month. God, I know it has been. Look. I'll show you my hands today. I haven't even had time to wash them. <laughs> but out there trying to <clears throat> deal with that uh, mess in the house. Two parents uh, in their 70s uh, losing everything. And so here we are. Guys, if you don't think I don't actually put my own a family in Section 8, you're crazy. I do. People even in my own family struggle with things. Let me, let me make something clear. There are lots of people like to talk to the side of their head about how the, you know, they're doing well and they're the they're YouTube entertainer. I'm not an entertainer. I'm a consultant to start with that. Number two, when I talk to you, I talk to you in real terms. My family's like anybody else's. It can struggle from drug addiction, mental illness, uh, for people making money and having none. Don't think for a minute I don't uh, work and sometimes I have to deal with my own family. That's a reality. And you should never be ashamed. If you need help, you need help. We're, we're, not, we're not rabbits. You can't live in the forest. You know, uh, if you're on the verge of being put out or ex the rent's too expensive or you're being dealt with with a housing authority that's simply brutalizing, harassing you, violating your federal rights, contact my office. That's that's the reason for this stuff. You know, uh, our channel is not based on entertaining. Now, there's lots of people and actors on YouTube that are just strictly entertainers. They like to talk about this and that. They've never read any federal law, policy, procedure, anything. One day they're an expert at baking cakes. The next day they're trying to be a fidget spinner, the master of that. And now they decide they're going to be a consultant. That's what we call in Louisiana a rodeo clown. You know, we're out here trying to make copper pennies. And uh, maybe we go buy ourselves some Louis Vuitton if we make them up on a little YouTube check. I'm not here for that drama. I'll consult. That's what I do. There are lots of clown channels. And the advice they give out, I would compare to the same thing as you walking down Third Street and talking to a hooker and getting advice that way. That's about how comparable knowledge of many of these other channels give in terms of talking about Section 8 and vouchers. I don't really want to disparage any channel, but I mean, the reality of it is, if you're going to lend your advice or opinion uh, on a subject matter, you should at least meet a professional standard. To Otherwise, shut the fuck up, go home. Okay. I know that's probably not professional, but I'm always, people have always known me to have um, 
that South Louisiana comes out of me, right? So people need to hear the truth, and that's the reality of it. Whether it's with profanities or not, I'm not going to make any apologies. I choose to deliver my message a different way. I'm not going to put on lipstick and makeup, get up here and be some complete broad uh, like other channels. I'm here to give advice whether people want it or not, or whether they like it or how I deliver it. That, that's the luxury of owning the channel, right? That's why we're talking about New York today and other housing authorities. What I'm trying to convince and make most of you understand is when you're dealing with a housing authority, you need to be careful. You need to be careful of the actors and the people working there. They don't always have your best interests. They're not there to teach you. They're there to qualify you, and if they qualify you for a voucher, you may receive it. I also don't want to overhype it either. We shouldn't be an extremist. Uh, you, you don't need to be paranoid either. You've either been treated badly or unfairly, or you have not. There are lots of housing authorities with extremely professional people. But the for the interest of most, I need to dispel the many rumors, and one of those, that housing authorities don't employ federal employees. These are private people, and many housing authorities are privately owned. And just because they're housing authority doesn't mean that they have the law of the land. They still have to meet federal rules and guidelines, many of which still run the housing authority like it's the Wild West or their private piggy bank. And you don't even know what's happened until the feds come kick in the door, snatch everybody by the hair, pull them out the building, throw them in jail, and then you find out that the housing authority is insolvent. Every penny's been robbed. The scam is up because there's no more money. Clearly, New York went on with it for 10 years. That means you had to give kick out kickbacks to nearly everybody in the building to keep everybody quiet. I guess the, finally there were simply too many people involved in the scam. There was not enough cash to pass around anymore. I guess everybody got a dollar. So when there wasn't enough money left, somebody whistled. Hey, you know what? We're running a 70-person scam. And now that I'm not being paid very well, I like to turn everybody's ass in. It ain't paying my light bill no more. I might be able to, I can't buy Gucci. It used to be a really sweet little scam with just five of us. We were all making 100000 a year. But now it's 70 people. We're only getting a dollar apiece. I like to turn everybody's ass in. And then the whistleblower gets, gets to walk free for testimony. You know, it's sad. It's basically, let me put it in a, in a baseline. These are all criminals. These are all criminals working at the housing authority. You didn't know there were criminals because we need to wait for a judge to go ahead and throw their ass in jail and convict them. But we just discovered that we had 70 felons working at the housing authority and other agencies. That's what it is. They're come, it's coming out the closet party. It doesn't mean that they're gay. It just means they're coming out the criminal closet. So constructively, between contractors and employees, we had 70 felons working in the building, so completely crooked people. And it appears that we're probably perpetuating this. It means we're hiring other criminals. So they all had high potential to be complete frauds. And you put your trust and you believe these people? You believe everything they tell you in the email when you don't have a voucher or they're trying to do you bad? You believe them now? The table's been turned. Now it's their turn to get a voucher. Section 9. You go down and sit down there in the federal pen and you think. It's the world's biggest. When you're a child, you're given time out in your room. When you're an adult, they call it committing a crime. When you get time out, they time your ass out in a federal prison. You sit in there quietly and you shut the fuck up. And then when you get out, you pay for your debt. And that's what's going to happen to these people. And I'm pretty sure it's going to, they're going to sing like little birds. And then we're going to discover this more than 70. It's sad. It's so sad. I mean, we didn't we didn't target the monetary budget for the city of New York. We didn't target the road fund or the military fund. We decided to be the most despicable criminals we can be and target programs that clearly were being robbed for the most vulnerable. So you are a special kind of criminal. You're just the worst kind. I'm going to let it go. YouTube's probably not going to forgive me. I used that F-bomb a few times, didn't I? But hey, I got that message out, didn't I? Because there's no good Christian way to describe this. There's no, there's no peace, peaceful way, no religious way to convey what's happened here. All right, so I'm going to move on to the comments real quick. Miss Echo, uh, disability services, no help. Northwestern or uh, Oregon. I got to say, I do love Oregon. So you know what, Miss Echo, if you ever want to entertain some company out there, I'd sure love to see Oregon again. I originally went up to Seattle. I hope to retire. 
uh, up there because it's so beautiful up in those areas in Oregon throughout uh, Washington. JW, good morning. Uh, keep it real, and he takes care of the cats. For many of you that follow our channel, you'll discover real quickly that I don't just help people with housing. I help approximately anywhere from 15 to upwards of 30 rescue cats, and I'm not looking for any special goal. You don't have to give me a, a cookie or a gold star for that. I quite enjoy helping uh, helpless animals as well. I guess I got, I, you know what, they called the crazy cat lady, and clearly I'm not a lady, but maybe it's mental illness, but I do I do like to help anything that's injured or abused. And so cats fell in that category for me, and I probably probably do a lot uh, in terms of that, but I, I'm not looking for anything special or any pat on the back for that. Thanks for bringing that up. Hey, guys, you want to, if you are a pet lover and you don't like, uh, and you want to support that, we have little memberships that are channel is a couple of bucks. Okay. If you support that kind of calls, you like, you like the message I'm delivering here or any video or the educational process, you're welcome to join. That's your way of showing me, Hey, you know what? We're alike. I enjoy what you have to say. I enjoy your cause. Okay. Otherwise don't, don't waste your money. If money's tight, don't blow it on my channel. Okay. I'm not here to, to take uh, and use your last pennies and nickels and dimes that, you know, don't blow your money if you don't got to. This is just for those that want to. All right, moving on from there. Keep it real. Yes, yes, big time. Criminals, uh, so much. Um, I forget what uh, SMH. Can somebody here comment and let me know what the SMH is? I think it's so much something. Uh, Shook Shields, been a while, man. How you doing? How can I save my voucher from a five-day notice? Shook, you're going to run and reach out to my office. I need to ask you some questions about that, okay? Silver Fox, finally caught you live. Did I miss the FSS? Well, Silver Fox, I have been off for about a week and a half. We had a fire with the family, step-parents, lots of drama going on. You know, it is, I'm at that age where family does its worst. You know, you got people dying. You got people, all kinds of things happening. I'm not going to disclose it all because my family is just as shameless as everybody else. But let's just say I've had a pretty difficult week and a half. It's a good damn thing I'm a section uh, consultant for Section 8, right? Have my family be on the street by now if I wouldn't. All right. Um, Lizzie, blessings. I appreciate that. Mary, um, Mary, mother of God, I love it. So you win the most interest, second most interesting name of the day, the poor supper always. Yeah, well, you know what? We're hoping to solve that as much as possible. Y'all watch me almost give myself a stroke during the pandemic trying to rescue people from hitting the street after – after we tried to evict 40 million Americans, my phone would have seizures daily. And I was working as 18 hour days and did it for a number of years. And I gotta tell you that that was the roughest patch of my life was trying to trying to rescue and keep as many people off the street as I could. Again, I don't need any anybody to thank me for that. I'm wanted to. Know that for sure. I'm wanted to. It wouldn't have made a damn if it was for free. I'm wanted to help people. I watch what the pandemic did, and I watch how awful people could become, you know. JW, how do I sign up for the membership? So the membership, it should say a join now button. Now, I don't know. If you're on your phone, see, I'm old school, guys. I use my phone sometimes for things on YouTube, but mostly I'm sitting in front of a big screen right now, and uh, I'm more of a desktop guy. One day I'm going to graduate uh, like uh, the grandkids, you know, and use use my phone for everything. All right, uh C. Blanton, thank you for uh, telling me uh, the meaning of that acronym, SMH. Shaking my head. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Rosie Beachy, looks like your comment was retracted. Sometimes YouTube gets a little weird about comments. You just have to rephrase your comment and it'll come back through. That isn't me doing that. Uh, Dennis Barry, you looks like your comment was retracted. You'll have to rephrase your comment. YouTube is uh, on a war path today, I guess. Look, YouTube has the option to be very strict in, in terms of words. Here's a great example. You have a person sitting on a bar stool, right? And then you talk about the medical reasons of a stool. YouTube makes no distinction. It'll block the word simply because it doesn't know the context in which you're trying to use it. My hands are free. I'm not blocking else comments, just, just to be clear. Jamal Gary, I get SSDI. Can, I, can you help me get uh, Section 8? I can certainly consult with you, Gary. We offer casework and related to that and all kinds of advice to expedite processes and help you better understand the system. Um, you reach out to my office, we discuss it, and if it's appropriate, I want to make something clear, guys. In terms of what I do for people and what our office does for people, this is a last option. 
this is an option where you, if you have tried every great effort on your own part and all things have failed, that's when you reach out to my office, okay? I'm not out of here as a first option. I'm here as a last option for those that have complex cases and so on, or you're simply just struggling, or maybe you're struggling for mental health or physical reasons, and you just, you need the extra advice, and that's that's where my office can step in. I don't want to be a first option. I want to be a last option. Uh, clearly, everybody's on fixed incomes, and many of you have very little. Uh, it's not my goal to take what you have just to, to, to consult with you, okay? <clears throat> All right. Keep it real. Yep, YouTube, the little a little sensitive. Oh, well, you bet you. You bet it. Look, one day I made a comment, and you know what? There's a rule. I may not use a profanity in the first seven seconds of the video, which absolutely sucks because at least one video a week I have – Sometimes awful things to say about housing authorities, and I'm still trying to graduate. Like today, I have to put eight dollars in the swear jar. I don't know what my hang up with that is, but it works great on YouTube because a lot of people snap to mix and pay attention, right? Would you know? And for my personal life, I rarely use profanities, but I got to tell you, some of the things that happen in terms of Section Eight housing, corrupt corrupt employees of housing authorities and otherwise bad landlords will make you swear. Even my German grandmother never said a bad word in her life, but I caught her one day when she caught her, she caught her little toe on that coffee table. That's the one and only time I ever heard that, that woman, uh, kick out a, a profanity, <laughs> you know? So for those of you who are German, you'd understand, uh, Jamal Gary, thank you. Says you reach out. And that is so true. Well, guys, I wanted to share the news. Now, look, I don't want you guys leaving here and being all a bunch of extremists because of what I said. Not every housing authority is doing a bad job. Even in New York, even in the city of New York, there are people that do care in that housing authority. It's just sad that most of them probably don't. And I'm not suggesting that the, the bulk or the majority of the employees being arrested are actually the housing authority employees or caseworkers. Clearly, this is administrative part that has to do more with financial, but the ultimate result of stealing and robbing and being complicit among 70 people means that many of you would not be able to get a voucher, that it would limit things greatly. And to run a scam 10 years tells me that many people that may have had an opportunity to get funding and have that voucher were eliminated because of the fraud of a handful. And this is not a handful. This is a basket load. This is a bus load of fraud. Okay, even the DOJ said this is the most in one day. When you're breaking, when you're not earning, when you're breaking records for being criminals, and I want to go back to that. We're discussing a building full of felons, the coming out party. Today we learned that the building was filled with criminals. We need to reexamine who the hell we're putting in charge of things. Because if what we're doing is we're hiring everybody off Craigslist to run things over there, okay? We got we got former prostitutes and drug addicts and other things, and uh, we have a high propensity for crime, then why are they in charge of these programs? So do I really think that's the situation? No, I'm actually antagonizing things a bit, but I would tell you it appears to me that, you know, if you put a lock on the door, then you could call it a jail because the whole place is nothing but criminals. And that's reality. I don't need to tell you that the Department of Justice said it very clearly. We filled a bus up with people today that are all criminals. But I'm happy to hear that our U.S. government has done its job because that means that we have 70 new souls that won a Section, 8, uh, Section 9 voucher. And the Section 9 voucher will entitle them to a free federal prison cell, and they're going to get a, they're going to get a lease with no keys. So I'm excited for them. I'm glad that they're able to participate like the rest of us. That many of you have seeking vouchers now they've gotten their voucher, and they're going to serve 75 percent of that lease, and they're not going to get a key. So I'm happy for them. So what will happen is in another video we'll post a picture. I would like for y'all to see what a criminal looks like when it wears nice, pretty clothes and presents itself as a professional. We're going to show you 70 criminals that have passed their cell off as caring. Because, you know, in order to do what you did, you're not just a criminal. You're a psychopath. Because anybody with defraud this type of program has to, has to have no moral or ethical center. That means you're not only a criminal, but you're a psychopath. 
You didn't give a shit about anybody. So it's the low of the low. All right, moving back to the comments real quick, and then I swear I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, keep it real. They are investigating them for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It took a while. But see, you know, they wanted to get everybody. Because when the building spilled with roaches, in order to kill all the roaches, you got to investigate for a while. They didn't just want to kill one big cockroach. They wanted to kill. The, there's a whole nest of roaches in that housing authority and other agencies connected to it. So to kill the nest of roaches, they had to investigate for quite a while. But now they went in there and they taken the door off the hinge and slapped on some new pretty uh, bracelets. We hope to see them in court and they'll be passing out those section nine vouchers and there'll be new recipients. They'll be wearing those tight whites in prison. And then uh, we'll get to see those photographs of all that nice Louis Vuitton shoes as it gets in that bus, roll their ass out and, and put everybody else on notice. If you think about committing fraud during this administration, and under Marissa Fudge or with this Department of Justice we got these days, you're on notice. They will come for you. All right, JW, how much time should I book for DB disability? Well, you start with 15 minutes, but you, if you have a long story, you have a lot to explain. I would just book 30 minutes, you know. 15 minutes goes pretty quick, and a lot, and a lot of my clients have a lot to say. It's my job to kind of rein it in because a lot of clients discuss things when they reach out to our office that aren't necessary, aren't going to help them resolve them with the problem. So I'm pretty good at keeping people on target. So my name is Jay. I'm the owner of Section 8 Consulting. Um, you can reach out to our office at www.section8consulting.com. And we're putting around 1,000 clients a year, many landlords, uh, multinational companies with houses and properties, uh, caseworkers, counselors, uh, legal aid societies, Anybody that respectively deals in terms of housing in Section 8, okay? Guys, I've enjoyed talking with you. For those of you religious or otherwise that take offense to my profanities, I'd ask that you just bear with us, okay? We can't, not everything can be the way that you want it. We live in the real world, and in the real world, things happen, right? That is the benefit or luxury of me running this channel, and that's the way I choose to convey my message. But make no mistake, you can look on Google, Yahoo, MSN, or even YouTube. There isn't a greater authority in terms of Section 8 or housing out there unless you work for HUD itself, okay? I hope you all enjoyed the video. We hope to see you again probably tomorrow because I want to put out a, a number of videos just in case another house burns down, a family falls to addiction or something like that, and I have to be gone for a week. So you never know. My life is as complex as many, and uh, I have to deal with it. And then sometimes it means I can't keep the video schedule I'd very much like to. That's the truth, and that's what you should all be seeking is somebody that can talk to you in terms you understand, but you can also believe it comes out of their mouth. They're not here to entertain. And you know I must have a slightly loose screw if I have a, uh, I still have a Christmas tree up, right? That's really just me having to work too much and not having the time to, to do anything for myself. And I don't trust the maid because she might break everything. And what maid I have, uh, I can only afford to have around twice a week. So the cats are always very appreciative. <laughs> All right, guys, I've enjoyed talking with you and you have a great day.